Powerful People. Encyclopedia Galactica presents biographies of notable people in the galaxy. This week, Yuri Grom. He fought off five other challengers to qualify for the big league. And yet, three years later, he was abandoned by his troops. His bushy beard, ludicrously scarred face and gimlet eyes seem almost like a caricature. Who is Yuri Grom? The truth is, we don't really know. A youthful 50 years old, Grom was born in 3256. Little's known about his early years, but despite his relative youth, he'd managed to become a federal admiral by the time he was 40. And then, without explanation, in 3301, he gave it all up. He abruptly resigned from the Navy and moved to his home system of Uriala. There is some speculation that Grom's bombshell was due to his disgust at corruption within the Federation, but it may equally be that he fancied himself as a tinpot dictator, which is what he became. And then he became a super-duper top-of-the-range dictator, with medals and epaulettes. A number of junior federal officers resigned along with Grom. It's not clear whether he bribed them, or whether it was his undoubted charisma that gained their loyalty. These junior officers were about to catapult Grom into the big time through the wonder of reality television. The Pilots' Federation had been screening contestants for its new Holovid series, The Dangerous Games, for several months. Five of the six teams had already been chosen. The Border Coalition, the Social LU Progressive Party, the Interstellar Communist Union, the Alliance Elite Diplomatic Corps, and Galcop. But there was a wild card qualifier for the sixth place, and somehow, no one quite knows how, Yuri Grom's name was put forward by his faction of ex-Federal Navy pilots, the so-called Uriala Gromite, or EG, pilots. And didn't he do well? Grom smashed the qualifiers, beating such luminaries as the Achinar Immortals, the Imperial Inquisition, Battle Vortex, Planet Express, Black Amiga, and Peleus Libertas, who were all voted off, and he totally pulverised in competition the Wolves of Jani, Adel's Armada, the Blackbird Squadron, and the United German Commanders Coalition. And so, in July 3302, Grom and the EG pilots took their place on the starting line of the dangerous games Rise to Power. There were to be three community goals. The first was to deliver the rare good Gilia signature weapons to the Jaradhara system. The EG pilots squeaked home into first place, although Galkop actually delivered more of the weapons in a slightly longer time. This was the point at which everyone realised that Grom actually might win. The second week required piracy skills, stealing technical blueprints and selling them into the nervy system black market. This time the EG pilots completely stormed the event with nearly twice as many blueprints as the second place Galcop. Some of the other competitors began to scheme to help Galcop win, on the anyone but Yuri principle. But it was all to no avail. In the third week, the Pilots' Federation gave the competitors a puzzle to solve, to find precious gems and sell them into the Meropis system. Unfortunately, the Pilots' Federation QA team hadn't checked the puzzle, so the gems had to be found by brute force means. And the sheer number of EG pilots meant that they could brute force better than anyone. Amid a flurry of salt from the other competitors, and from participants who missed out on their decals, Yuri Grom was announced the winner, and the eleventh and final power in the galaxy. He took his place at the Celestial Chessboard in October 3302, unceremoniously booting out the other powers that were in his core systems. Grom brought to the table the so-called Grom Bomb, a frameshift drive disruptor mounted on a dumbfire missile that has led to many a peaceful freighter commander losing his ship and cargo. Rallying his troops under the slogan, Freedom Among the Stars, everything looked bright for Grom the Power. But less than three years later, 
In July 3305, the EG pilots announced that they were no longer supporting Grom after his terrible bouts of anger became just too much for them. The Grom power lives on in name, but in fact it's a hollow vehicle for so-called fifth columnists and all the disruption and chaos you might expect when a dictator goes bad. Grom is an embarrassment to the galaxy, and the corrupt dictator holds on to power only because his presence is convenient for the mafia, smugglers and drug dealers that run the rotten state of Uriala. The Pilots' Federation is rumoured to have been considering deposing the drunken old despot, but still he clings on to power. Just. He is a spent force, a husk, a hollow man. He has a group photograph on the wall of his dictator's office. It used to show a laughing Grom surrounded by cheering commanders from the EG pilots. Now every one of the EG pilots has been airbrushed out, and the photograph just shows Grom laughing maniacally with his arms round the shoulders of thin air like a distressed albatross. They say it's lonely at the top. Well, it's a hell of a lot more lonely when you've fallen all the way down to the bottom again. And that brings us to the end of the current series of Powerful People. Watch out for more documentaries from the Encyclopedia Galactica.